straight jump to the, uh, let's do 36 first. Just keep a lot of this. All this will uh, will be sent to you. So this is uh, different from the live. You first you get a discussion from me and then you get a live lesson, uh, answers, the answers uploaded. But in this case for mocks, you already have the answers online. So a this is a question of whether you understand the answers or you need the teacher to go through it to actually have a better understanding. And that's why you are here. Okay, otherwise you can go back to your mock paper. You go to the last page, you can actually see the answers. And it's better you mark the answers for sec booklet B, especially because then you learn how to get, award yourself marks and then you can get a overall marks for your paper. Mark one and mark two, right? MCQ is marked for you. You know how many marks you get. But the booklet B, we don't mark for you because we can't really mark language. We don't know how you write your answers. So make sure you have your key points that, are, that can be awarded marks. Give yourself marks, write down. Okay, it won't be exact, but at least you know roughly, right? Because you don't need to be exact. AL1 is 91 or 90 to 99 or 100, right? If you get 90 to 100, you're already AL1. I don't need to be exact. If it can be 91, it can be 99. So if you mark yourself, you will know which band you are in by AL1, AL2, AL3. Okay, the exact score doesn't really matter. We just want to know which category you fall into. And then we try to pull you up from there. Okay, 36. 36 is a forces question, right? With a spring balance pulling it. So let's look at it. Let's spend um, some uh, brainy time the way we did with the riddles. Okay, think through this. Okay, this is also like riddles uh, science. Whenever they give you diagrams, uh, yesterday we discussed, we can give you diagrams as a data, table as a data, and also text as a data. Many of you forget that besides text and, uh, sorry, besides table and, um, graphs you can also and diagrams you can have text as data also and that is that is what the riddle because if you solve the riddle then you get the answer okay so today's uh, refresher course on riddles was actually useful huh? you i think you remember it for life that solve the riddle and you are on your way to getting the marks right where is the riddle the riddle is hidden inside here look at look at question 36 you have diagram you have here you have three items you have a diagram i'm going to write it down please pay attention on the screen you have text which you have to read through as well and you have a table can you see these are called the data based on the data which is the reader you solve the data you solve the reader you get your answer because they are all three separate components uh, not put together you have to put them together because one is a picture i can use a photo and take a picture one is a table i need to use an excel sheet or some kind of tools to draw a line and create a table. Another one is I just can use a typewriter and type. And all three of them are talking about the same thing, but need to put the jigsaw puzzle together. Yeah, you can also call it jigsaw puzzle, like a riddle, right? Riddle, jigsaw puzzle, put them together, solve it. So what do we do? Solve it. Conducted an experiment as shown, who? Diana. She used a spring balance to find out the amount of force needed. Amount of force, okay. So I, why? So I'm going to underline, Maybe I use green also. The amount of force needed. By that, she's going to calculate it by pulling and going to see what's the number reading on the spring balance or how far the spring can need to be pulled. Across a plank made with material A. So it's not only force, yeah, it's frictional force because wooden block will have some friction on the plank, right? So she's going to overcome the frictional force and pull the wooden block across plank material A. She then repeated the experiment with B, C, D, materials B, C, D. Which part is that? Okay, this is the reader. Please, somebody, somebody needs to tell me now, where is this B, C, D? Okay, uh, okay. look out for my blue pen. Huh? I'm going to circle blue. Why they talk about B, C, D, but it's not in the diagram? Okay. Um, I restart, clear all feedback. First person to raise hand can answer. Harvey first, Harvey was first. Okay, Harvey, Why, where is the BCD? It's not anywhere in the diagram. It's in the table. It's inside the table. 
Yeah, inside table is a result. But I'm talking about diagram. Can you see diagram text and table, right? Where can I put BCD in the diagram? Not in the table. The table is done. Yeah. Yeah, so, okay. Very good. So let's look at my red pen. All of you look at my red pen. This is where I put one star, two star, three star, four star. Five star. Leading to A. Where's A? This one. Only A is there. She starts with A, but then, however, later she changes to B, C, D. Understood? So this is solving the first part where the text can be translated to the diagram so that you know that she's changing the plank with material A to material B to material C, not the wooden block. Some of you may think, oh, the wooden block is being changed to A, B, C, D. Ah, no, no. Okay. So please refrain from having some confusion and please be clear. This is called reading the information to understand the question first and then carrying on. Recorded the results, right? So she changed material. Obviously, what happens is in your mind, you're thinking, why did she change material? Next person. Ming Che, you, got, you know why she changed material? <clears throat> Raika, you know why she changed material? Uh, the aim is to find out the uh, like what material uh generate the most amount of friction for between the surface of the material and the surface of the block. Okay, thank you. Now, yeah, Raika gave a very long answer. That is like if the usually the the question will write that Raika can be an examiner already because he said the aim of this Diana's experiment is to test if the if different materials will cause. Diana to use different amounts of force to pull the wooden block across the plank using different amount of force, which is ultimately to what? Ultimately to what? Why different materials? Uh, Justin, why different materials? It's to like carry out the aim of the experiment because like if you don't use a different if you don't use like different materials, there's no point in carrying out the experiment. You use different materials to find out the amount of force needed to pull a wooden bar across the plane of material A. And this will allow us to investigate which one is the roughest and which one is the smoothest. And yes. Okay. Yeah. So you, yes, there will be a lot of different forces required. So my, my uh, request was, so he said, we will find out whether it's rougher or smoother. So the shorter of that rougher or smoother is actually friction right the word that you can use is friction to to know whether there'll be more friction or less friction with material a material b material c material d which one has the most friction if it has, if it has the most friction then diana will use the most force and that's it so now we just go straight to the amount of force required and goes and go and zoom in and quickly circle with a white pen i'm going to use the white pen the one that required the most force because I zoom in. Hey, which one is it? Which one is it? I think you guys know you can help me. It's A, right? 275. Then I write this down. Am I right? Then the other one. Oh, which one is least friction? <laughs> So as Justin said, you can also write it's rougher because the roughest material is sometimes you can write there is the roughest material, but this is not how we write science. In, in, that's why we're looking at all the students across Singapore, whether they learn the word friction or not. We don't want you to say rougher, smoother, because it's very hard to know whether you learn the word friction in your life or not. So we want to test you, you write material A between uh, material A and the wooden block, there's most friction. And between material C and the wooden block, there's least friction. Therefore, the forces are as shown, right? What should Diana do to ensure that her results are reliable? Okay. This is where many students like, eh, I'm not even prepared for this. I only know most friction, least friction. I know most roughest and smoothest. Yeah, I can say frictional force. You can say friction. 
it's like you can say gravitational force you can say gravity you can but most of the time we prefer you to say force it's just like magnetism you say magnetic force friction you say frictional force friction is the only one you can probably short form it and it would sh shouldn't get into trouble magnetic force you got to say magnetic force uh, elastic spring force you got to say that and um, gravitational force as well okay Okay, so what should Diana do to ensure that her results are reliable? Anyone can uh, share before we move on? Sudirvin, how about you, Sudirvin? She could repeat the ex uh, experiment three times and find mm -hmm. the average. Okay, very nice. You know what is beautiful about this? One mark is free answer because for every experiment, for every experiment in the world, whether you are in primary three or primary six or sec one or sec four, Whenever you do an experiment, you are asked to repeat it. That gives you reliable results because the first time is not always the correct time. Okay, so you do it a, a, a two times. If you're not satisfied, you do it three times, and then you take an average, and that is a more reliable result because over three, because every time something uh, some different condition changes, or you didn't do a measurement correctly, or you didn't pull correctly. For example, the spring balance. For example, you are working as a pair. You and your friend, John and Mark. First, so the teacher say, all of you do as a pair work, right? So John does it first. And then he finds a set of answers. Then maybe you should ask John to do it three times. But maybe he's so strong that he pulls it wrongly. Or he's doing some kind of technique that's wrong. He's pulling it to the left or right. So Mark also should take over and try it. Okay, so you should always balance out your experiment and do it three times and take an average so that your other variables that are inherent in the experiment that could go wrong will not be taken in as a result. Because one time there could be something that wrong with your experiment and then you take that as a final result and then you present it. Then people ask you, how sure are you? Uh, Tia, actually, I'm not so sure. How many times did you do? One time. Ah, how can you do one time? Okay, one time is not uh, enough. Okay. So very good. So let's carry on. She should carry out the experiment three times, not only three times, but for each material A, B, C. So how should the table actually look like? Now let me write it up here. So in many a times they don't put this in the exam, but in the in the in your workbook or in your experiment book, when you do it, you must do uh, trial one. Trial two, trial three. So 270, 275, okay, 280. Say for example. So what happens here? Three times I've done for A and I go get an average. My average is 275. Do you see what I've done? Is this table good for you guys? Have I done it three times? Not just for one material, but I have to do for all four. And then I have to take average. Therefore, I will only display the yellow table below, which is the average. Then I can trust the data. So this is what is important in experiments. Whenever you go to the lab, you have to do this. And maybe in primary school, you didn't have much time to do many experiments. But trust me, going to SEC 1, you're going to spend a lot of time doing experiments. We are going to focus more on experiment guess why because you have experiment or lab exams also test we will test you how you do your work in the lab so be prepared for that so whatever techniques that we teach you we will see we will see whether Sudirvin, Harvey, Raika, Mincha and Justin and everyone here have you all done it three times or not we will mark, mark your paper right the teacher will mark can see can see what the working where is the working the working is right here on top right on the screen this is working so I will have more numbers here. Can you imagine? You just so one student will do the experiment twelve times. After that, he need to do another four numbers for average, and all together he will have sixteen numbers on his worksheet. Another student may only have four numbers. Obviously, he didn't do his work properly. Okay, so that's your tip for doing experiment. Besides using the same spring balance, identify one other variable that Diana had to keep constant in order to ensure a fair test. We already know what's a fair test. You have to only change one variable and that variable that she's changing in this experiment is the plank. The rest keep same. Don't go and change another spring balance. Don't go and change another wooden block. Just the plank.